India is the world's largest democracy, but how did it become one? How did it survive the challenges of partition, war, poverty, and diversity? How did it shape its own identity and destiny after centuries of colonial rule? In this video, we will explore the history of India after Gandhi, the father of the nation who was assassinated just six months after independence. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel where I review books on history, politics, and culture. I'm your host, and today I'm going to talk about India after Gandhi by Ramachandra Guha, a book that covers the history of India from 1947 to 2007. This book is a masterpiece of modern history that tells the story of post-independence India with depth, detail and insight. It shows how India defied the predictions of doom and chaos and emerged as a vibrant and diverse democracy that has made remarkable achievements as well as faced persistent problems. In this video, I will summarize the main points of this book in five parts. Part 1. Picking up the pieces. Part 2. Nehru's India. Part 3. Shaking the center. Part 4. The Rise of Populism. Part 5. A History of Events. Part 1. Picking up the pieces, this part covers the period from 1947 to 1951, when India faced the aftermath of partition, which divided the country into two nations, India and Pakistan. Partition caused massive violence, displacement, and suffering for millions of people who had to cross the new borders. It also created new challenges for the Indian government, such as integrating the princely states, securing Kashmir, resettling refugees, and drafting a constitution. This part also introduces some of the key figures who shaped India's destiny after Gandhi's death, such as Jawaharlal Nehru, the first Prime Minister, Vallabhai Patel, the Deputy Prime Minister and Home Minister, B. R. Ambedkar, the chief architect of the constitution and a leader of the Dalits or Untouchables, Rajendra Prasad, the first president and Maulana Azad, the education minister and a Muslim nationalist. Part 2. Nehru's India. This part covers the period from 1951 to 1964, when Nehru dominated Indian politics and laid the foundations of modern India. Nehru was a visionary leader who had a secular, socialist, and democratic vision for India. He pursued a policy of non-alignment in foreign affairs, avoiding alliances with either the US or the Soviet Union during the Cold War. He also initiated ambitious plans for economic development, social reform, scientific research, and cultural integration. This part also highlights some of the achievements and challenges of Nehru's era, such as the first general elections in 1952, the linguistic reorganization of states in 1956, the wars with China in 1962 and Pakistan in 1965, the rise of regional parties and movements, and the emergence of new leaders such as Lal Bahadur Shastri, Indira Gandhi, Part 3, Shaking the Center, this part covers the period from 1964 to 1977, when India witnessed major changes and challenges in its political and social landscape. After Nehru's death in 1964, his successors faced a series of crises, such as food shortages, droughts, inflation, corruption, and internal conflicts. The Congress Party, which had been the dominant force in Indian politics since independence, faced a decline in its popularity and legitimacy. The opposition parties, such as the Svatantra Party, the Jan San, and the Communist Party of India, Marxist, gained more support and influence. This part also focuses on the rise and fall of Indira Gandhi, Nehru's daughter and India's first female prime minister. Indira Gandhi came to power in 1966 and consolidated her authority by defeating her rivals within and outside the Congress party. She also pursued a more assertive foreign policy, supporting the liberation of Bangladesh from Pakistan in 1971 and conducting a nuclear test in 1974. However, she also faced growing discontent and opposition from various sections of society, such as students, workers, peasants, minorities, and regional leaders. In 1975, she declared a state of emergency and suspended civil liberties and democratic rights. She also launched a controversial mass sterilization campaign to control population growth. In 1977, she called for fresh elections and was defeated by a coalition of opposition parties called the Janata Party, 
Part 4, The Rise of Populism, this part covers the period from 1977 to 1989, when India experienced a resurgence of democracy and diversity. The Janata Party government that came to power after the emergency was short-lived and unstable. It collapsed in 1980 due to internal conflicts and defections. Indira Gandhi returned to power with a landslide victory in 1980 and tried to restore her image and authority. However, she also faced new challenges and threats from various quarters, such as the Sikh separatist movement in Punjab, the Naxalite insurgency in Bihar and Andhra Pradesh, and the rise of regional parties in Tamil Nadu and West Bengal. In 1984, she was assassinated by her Sikh bodyguards in retaliation for ordering a military operation to flush out militants from the Golden Temple in Amritsar. This part also traces the rise of populism and identity politics in India. After Indira Gandhi's death, her son Rajiv Gandhi became the prime minister and tried to modernize India with new policies and initiatives. He also tried to resolve some of the long-standing conflicts and disputes in India, such as the Punjab problem, the Assam agitation, and the Kashmir issue. However, he also faced allegations of corruption and nepotism. He also alienated many sections of society by reversing some of his earlier decisions and policies. For example, he overturned a Supreme Court verdict that granted alimony to a Muslim woman who was divorced by her husband through a practice called triple talaq. He also opened the locks of a disputed mosque temple site in Ayodhya that sparked communal tensions between Hindus and Muslims. In 1989, he lost the elections to a coalition of opposition parties led by V.P. Singh. Part 5, A History of Events, this part covers the period from 1989 to 2007, when India witnessed a series of events and developments that shaped its present and future. The coalition governments that came to power after Rajiv Gandhi's defeat were unstable and short-lived. They also faced various challenges and crises, such as the rise of Hindu nationalism and communal violence, the liberalization of the economy and its social and environmental consequences, the emergence of new social movements and civil society groups, the rise of new regional powers and aspirations, the threat of terrorism and nuclear proliferation, and the changing relations with the world and its neighbors. This part also highlights some of the achievements and problems of India in this period such as the growth of democracy and diversity, the expansion of education and media, the empowerment of women and Dalits, the protection of human rights and minorities, the promotion of culture and heritage, the advancement of science and technology, the reduction of poverty and inequality, the management of natural resources and disasters, and the pursuit of peace and security. Epilogue, A 50-50 to 50 Democracy, this part concludes the book by assessing India's achievements and failures as a democracy. Guha argues that India is a 50 to 50 democracy, meaning that it has succeeded in some aspects, but failed in others. He praises India for being a resilient and pluralistic democracy that has survived many challenges and crises. He also criticizes India for being a flawed and unequal democracy that has failed to deliver justice and development to many sections of society. He identifies some of the strengths and weaknesses of India's democracy, such as its vibrant electoral system and civil society, its weak institutions and governance, its rich diversity and culture, its persistent violence and corruption, its dynamic economy and society, its enduring poverty and discrimination. He also suggests some ways to improve India's democracy, such as strengthening its federalism and decentralization, reforming its political parties and judiciary enhancing its education and health care, protecting its environment and minorities, engaging with its diaspora and neighbors. He ends by expressing his hope and optimism for India's future as a democracy. I hope this summary gives you an overview of India after Gandhi by Ramachandra Guha. If you want to learn more about this book or other books on history, politics, and culture, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get notified when I upload new videos. Thank you for watching. Folded Hands